Now that we have configured the monitor buses, sources, destinations, as well as the module configurations for the DSP power, it's time that we connect functions to NUPS. To do this, we select the hardware settings and go to the service configuration page. On the page service configuration, we see five objects or devices in the column MemberNet address. These are four fader control panels, a control room monitor panel and an axometer application. This we can also see in the picture of the system we show you here. We have loaded the Axum with the default configuration, but this can be changed according to your needs, of course. We start with the four fader control servers by clicking on Configure in the Settings column. Then a new page opens and we see here many different objects that are present on these nodes. On top we have the display, the encoder, and the encoder switch, that is part of the encoder, and then we have all the switches. The switches are numbered, the first number is the channel in which the switch is located, and the second number is the position of the switch in that channel or module. So if we look at the panel, we see switch 1.1, this is 2.1, this is 3.1, and this is 4.1. We can see that on the first switch, 1.1, we have programmed the dump function. On the switch 1.2, we have a module preset function. Switch 1.3 is a program on off. Switch 1.4 is a record on off. Switch 1.5 is a PFL, and so on up to switch 1.8. If we want to change the function of a switch, we click on the function of that particular switch and we get a choice out of our functions we can assign to that switch. For switch, there are many functions available. We have a number of sub-functions listed in this drop-down menu. We have module-related functions such as EQ on and off, module on off, bus on off. We have bus functions to assign signals to a bus. We have monitor bus functions to switch the control room monitor to PFL dump or program bus. We have console functions, global functions and source functions for a specific source. And finally we have destination functions. Let's first have a look at the module functions. If we choose a module function we need to make clear for which module this is. Here we select module 1. We select preset A or preset B. So if we select preset A for this switch, preset A will be loaded when this switch is activated. No other module or no other function will be controlled by this switch. Module preset AB will alternate between preset A and B. It does not matter if it's the main preset A, 1, 2, 3 or 4, the switch will always load the preset A or B within this main preset. You can also select a dedicated preset such as 1A, 1B, 2A or 2B. We can select the Phantom to be active on a source that has been selected on this module. So when I select Source Phantom, the system first looks at which source is selected on this module and on that source Phantom is activated. This goes also for the PET, the source gain level, of course. On the module itself, we can switch the insert on and off. Other module functions are phase, gain, low cut on off, several equalizer functions, dynamics on off, mono, pen reset, module on, module off, or module on off for alternating this function. We can open a fader and activate the on switch or close the fader. We can also reset a level on a module. Here we can activate or deactivate various buses such as program, record. 
we can adjust the level and reset it for the pen pot and balance pot. We can also activate or deactivate various buses such as program bus, record bus and many others. We can adjust the level of pen pot and balance pots. And we have a lot of buses we can activate by this switch. Remember bus 31, 32 is the on-air bus. Then there are a number of source functions that are very convenient, a function such as source start. This function generates a start control signal for the source that is activated on this module. Normally you want to generate a start control signal that belongs to the source that is selected on the module. So if you select another source in that module, the start signal also needs to go to the new source and not linked to the old source. So a start function is made on the module source start. We also have a module source stop, start stop and we have a cuff function that is used on our mix source. And we have a source alert that we use as an alert in the mixer. Every source has its own alert that can be used to indicate overload in a module. But also for ring detect of a hybrid it can be used for. Then we have the routing presets. We can make presets for routing and for talkback signals to a related destination. If a source has a related destination, then this switch can check which source is active and then activate talkback 1 to a related destination. Then we have control 1, 2, 3 and 4 reset. It looks which mixer this is and puts it back in its default setting. The select function 1, 2, 3 and 4 are functions controlled by the central controller unit for the encoder. The encoders can have several functions. It can be a function that belongs to a module but can also be a module that belongs to a select function. Let's have a look at the bus. Here you select for which bus the function will be active, in this case program. What can we do for this bus? We can reset bus master levels and generate a talkback signal on this bus output. When a talkback signal is generated on the bus output, the mixer will check on which output and on which destination this bus is active and then we'll eject the talkback signal. So, talkback is not really routed to a bus, but software will check which buses are routed to which destinations and there a talkback signal will be generated. Monitor bus. Select the monitor bus. Then select which monitor bus will be active, in this case control room monitor. Now you can select out of the several buses. In this case, program on or off can be activated, or program alternating on or off. This goes for all the buses, of course. We can also switch on or off external inputs, and of course mute, dim mono, phase and talkback signal. By assigning talkback 1 to the CRM bus, it means that on every destination that has a CRM as a source, TOC1 will be active. So again, we're not talking to a bus, but to the output of those modules that are connected to the CRM bus. Console. Here we select which console we want a function to be active by pushing this switch 2 to 1. We can activate a number of functions here, but the bottom line is that we can manipulate the console into a mode. If the console is in control mode source, the encoder will select the source. Sources like gain, phantom and all other functions we can select globally. But also master functions, like master output levels, bus levels, master and control mode.
In this case, when master and control mode auxiliary 1 is selected, this control function will adjust the master level and locally the encoder will adjust the aux level on the module. And then of course we have the program end time enable that can be activated. We also can activate the console chip card change that will be dealt with later in other demos. Global. The most important function is of course red light. The moment we assign global red light 1 to this switch, red light 1 will be activated by means of this switch. The internal LED will also light if red light 1 is activated. Then of course we have the console presets that we can load by way of a switch. We have names attached to a preset so we can easily find it the next time. Then we have the source. There are specific source functions. If I select a DJ mic and then select here Phantom, that means that this switch 1.1 will always switch on or off the Phantom power of the DJ mic. So it doesn't matter what has been activated on the module, this switch will always switch on or off Phantom power of the DJ mic. In this way, switch function on a module will not be used as a module switch function but tied to a source, in this case fandom of the DJ mic. This function is very handy when you frequently want to use the fandom or any other function for a source. Normally this function will not be used very often because it's more clear to only have module related functions activated for this module and source related to this module. Destination is about the same principle. If you select here for instance a dead recorder and I select dim, then this switch will always activate dim for the dead recorder's output. More useful is, of course, to use this function for the CRM speakers. In this way, this switch will always activate or deactivate the dimming of the CRM speakers. It doesn't matter what the module is used for, this switch will always be the CRM sw dim switch. I do not save this example and leave it at the dumb bus on off. We see a lot of switch function, let's have a look at an encoder. Here we click on the label module 1 control. Now we're going to select something else, for instance source. Now we can see all possible functions an encoder can do for us. We select input gain and now we can adjust the DJ mics level. The moment I attach this function to this encoder I will always adjust the DJ mics gain. Now we can see all kind of functions an encoder can do for us. We select input gain and now we can adjust the DJ's mic level. The moment I attach this function to this encoder, it will always adjust the DJ mic gain. On the other hand, if I select module 1, and select source gain level, I will always adjust gain of all sources selected for this module. This is a more logical solution for a module function. Now gain adjust is always for a source connected to this module. Normally we have the encoder programmed as a control function. So with these settings, like this module, one control, 
it means that the functionality of the encoder is dependent upon the control and the control we program with CRM. So we see here that all functions of the display, encoder and encoder switch, are dependent upon settings of the control parameter. But we can also give them a dedicated function. If we look further down, we see familiar switch functions like module 2 source start. This switch is very clearly and dedicated selected for module and source start. So a start function is generated on the source that is activated on this module. Here we see a couple of LEDs on this module that we can give various functions. In this case the LEDs show when the AUX buses are active. We can also show Dynamics active, any Q, Signal present and peak. Let's have a look where the LEDs are positioned. These LEDs now show Auxiliary, Dynamics, EQ, Signal and Peak, but could also indicate alternative functions. On the bottom of the web page we can program the color of the switches. The big switches can show you three colors. They have two internal LEDs, green and red. Green and red together makes orange. In this case, the on color is set to 1, which is green, and is activated. Two is red. The off color is 0, and is activated for most switches. It means when a switch is off, no color will be showed. An alternative could be to make a non-active switch shows green and an active switch lights red. This is a dedicated function of the switch. We can also have the color changed by a module function. In this example, I will change the off color of the last switches by means of a module function and I use this function in module 1, source alert. If the source alert source on the module generates an alert, the color will change from 0 to 1. So the switch will light in its off state. In this way, alert will give an indication on this switch. On the in and outputs, we can assign an alert function to a specific card function. In this example, we will assign in the hybrid card the ring detect to the source alert. So when a hybrid is activated on this module, the alert will be generated and a LED will light when a ring detect takes place. So we can program all LEDs, display and switches on the module. If we do not assign a function to a switch, nothing will happen when this switch is pushed. To the right we see a column called local. In this column we make labels we use to display the function of the switches in the software application. The default labels are shown in the default column. For instance default label bus12 on has a local label called PROG, short for program. It means that if the software is loaded the text PROG or SUB will be shown in the display. In this way it's clear what function is assigned to this switch. On the right side of the web page we see user level. User level is used to program a specific switch, encoder, potentiometer or fader and might be used in a specific mode. We have six user modes we have called idle, unknown, operator 1, operator 2, supervisor 1 and supervisor 2. Idle means that no one is locked on to the mixer and no chip card is present. Unknown means somebody is locked on with a chip card or by typing his or her name and the software does not recognize the user. 
operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2 are known users allowed to carry out instructions. The known users are divided in three groups, operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2. Then there's a fifth level, which is the administrator that can carry out all the possibilities in the system. And this user is not known, not shown on this list, sorry. In another section of the software, all users functions that are allowed are not allowed under control of idle, unknown, operator 1, 2, and supervisor 1 and 2 are programmed there. But we can override these locally. Imagine the dump function is not allowed for the idle user and unknown user, but it is for the operator 1, 2 and supervisor 1 and 2. We put the label here to no for idle and unknown. Now the function is overwritten for this module only. Normally you also do that for the other four dump switches in this four fader section. So this is done locally. But the next fader panel, this has not been done yet. To avoid a lot of programming locally, we can do that also globally in the database, where we can switch off all dump functionality. If I click it to yes, the label is blue. It means that this function is locally activated. If I click again the label yes, will be grayed out and will now follow the global settings of the system. In this case, all is yes. So everything might be used in this mixer. We do not have security settings for the LEDs. These are showing always what is happening. We only have security settings for functions that are controlled from the control surface. On this screen we program the functionality of a LED, encoder, fader and display. And these functions are grouped. We have module functions for all that is related to the module, bus functions for that is related to the buses, monitor functions mainly used to control room monitor matters, there are console functions but also source functions that only affects a dedicated source and destination functions that are only active on dedicated destinations. If no function is assigned a switch encoder LED or display will not function this includes all nets near the fader. On the right side we have the user levels where we program who is allowed to do what in this module. This module knows after programming to which user level it is assigned and you can see this in the page service configuration. We were busy with UE4 fader 1 to 4 that is now part of console 1. So dependent upon which user level is locked on to the console 1, if console 1 is locked on as a user 1. Let's have a look. If he is operator 1, then this function will be allowed. So it is important that if you use security levels, that these set levels are programmed for that specific console you are working with. In this case, all is about console 1. So all should be set to console 1. Let's have a look at the user interface CRM, the third panel of the control service, which I will show you now. It is the panel that is located on the far right that we mostly use for control room monitor. Also here, all the switches are numbered from top to bottom. All switches have a function. Switches that do not have a function are not connected and do nothing of course. Here too we have a security setup and local labels. However, there are a few special switches on this front panel in the upper section that need more explanation. I will show you these to you.
This upper segment of switches we use to give functionality to the encoders and displays. We will look at the function column. Switch 1 is set to console mode and is a console function because I want to do something on the console. But for which console? Console 1, because I work with that console. What is the function I will assign? Let's select source. In other words, all console mode switches and encoders located on console 1 will be set to source. Let's have a look at another function such as control mode gain. For console 1, we activate the control mode gain, so all encoders are set to act as gain controls for console 1. Then we also have standard functions like console preset. This switch is programmed to perform a global function. A global function means loading a console preset. On the CRM bus we have of course the monitor bus function that can switch the CRM bus to program on or off. So all switches will get a dedicated function. Here, for instance, is a function that you can talk to the studio bus. I took this function from the monitor bus, and for which bus it should be? For the studio bus. And I program there, talkback1. It means that everyone who is listening to the studio bus, talkback1 will be activated on the destination. For instance, this function is not well programmed. I want to control the monitor phones as a destination. These are the headphones in the control room that I want to change over with TalkBack. What will happen now if this switch is activated? TalkBack 1 will be activated on the output of the headphones. So only this CRM phone's output will get this TalkBack 1 signal. An opposite function is this one. Everyone that is listening to the monitor bus or studio bus will listen to TalkBack 1. I see that this one is not OK. Destination. On the headphones of the studio TalkBack, one will be activated. So only this output will get TalkBack signal from the studio. In this way, we have learned to program all the switches and even the chip card in the CRM module. The final part that needs programming are the exameters and its display on the TFT screen. On the TFT screen we see here we can program all functions and displays to our own needs. If we start at the top, where you can read node X and meters, you first see meter 1. I can here program what I want to see on meter 1 left. The programming is now set to bus and program, and I want to see the audio level left. Another selection could be control room monitor bus, which I want to see my audio left. You can also select to see module 1 and its audio level. All display functions that are possible here are here to select from. Here we can have, here we have chosen to see the program level. The phase meter is set to read the phase correlation of the left right program level. The meter label, the actual text that is visible beneath the meter, we name program. In this way it's easier to remember that this is the program bus level that we are listening to and monitoring on the screen. The second label, we have two labels underneath the meters, the master level will be shown. In this case the bus master level, the level the bus master is set to. In this way we can always see 
at what level the bus master is set to, here it's 0 dB. The second large meter can be programmed in a similar way. We also have a third and fourth meter, these are smaller. Let's have a look where they are located. Here you see two large meters, plus the phase meter for both large meters. Program label and level indication. Then we have two smaller meters on the right hand side, both the left and right display and their function labels. On the program page we can recognize these meters as meter 3 left and right and meter 4 left and right and also their labels. We can see that they are programmed to show us on-air audio level and CRM bus signal. Then we also have the main clock label. On the top of the screen we have four labels that can be highlighted. On the program page they are labeled red light 1 to 8. We have an active label and a passive label. The active label 1 lights when red light 1 is active. On red light 2 is active and the second label will light. On the red light 5 label I have selected the alert function of the hybrid 1 and connected it to the red light 5 label. This function is a source function coming from the source of the hybrid alert. The next step is to connect this alert of the hybrid 1 to a ring detect. In other words, when the hybrid 1 detects a ring alert on the phone line, the red light 5 label will be highlighted. You can see on the TFT screen that the red light indicators have changed to phone alerts 1, 2, 3 and 4. Further down on the page we see all the settings for program and time in minutes and seconds. That we can see on screen as well as the countdown time. Further down is an overview of a complete module. And as last item we have 32 stereo meters that we can assign to various sources. Normally this will be the channel meters 1 to 32. In this case the first small meter will show the stereo audio level of module 1 and the smaller meter at the far right side the signals of module 32. But also another source can be selected such as auxiliary bus. Here we select bus for auxiliary 1 and audio level left and for the other meter also bus auxiliary 1 and audio level right. By doing this we now see the auxiliary 1 level on meter 32 in stereo. In this way we can easily change the configuration according to our needs. On the meter we do not have a switch function, so levels do not need to be adjusted or set. In this way we program a complete system configuration of all the hardware components on the user's interface. In this case we have one system of three fader panels, one CRM panel and an application called exometers. If you have more systems they will be shown here as well. Also for these other systems we can program to which user level it belongs and we can program it. If we are ready with the configuration we can export it, give it a name for instance, for fader, and we can import it into another module. We can also import another preset that was already saved in the system. We then need to set an offset value to get the right data on the right faders. If I want to import fader 5.5 to 8 settings with the same fader data of 1 to 4, I need to fill in an offset of 4 to realize this. In this way it is easy to copy paste an already programmed section of the system's faders panels. So on this page we program all the remote controls of the user's interface.